Hebrews chapter 4. Wow. Amen. <laughs> what a wonderful day. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to start from verse 14. And so, Father, we just want to thank you again for this wonderful, glorious day that we, as body of Christ, celebrate. Celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that in his resurrection, he conquered death sin and the grave. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you that you open the eyes of our understanding yes. to not just shout and be joyous, but to fully comprehend what you did and accomplished in our behalf on that cross and what you live for even now. And so I pray for every man and every woman under the sound of my voice. God, that we will not leave this place the same, but God, that we will be transformed by the power of your spirit. That revelation will come forth, light will come forth, that we will see you in a new light and see ourselves in the light of you. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We praise your name. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 4, I will not be long at all. Verse 14 says, See then, oh my gosh, I forgot to introduce my niece. Yetunde on us. Praise God. That's my niece. I'm sorry. It's my, she's my niece. It's good to see you. God bless you. Amen. I am free. And so you are free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. And I'm glad that there's no controversy here because now we are told who this high priest is. Jesus, the Son of God. Now, seeing this, what are we supposed to do? Let us do what? Hold fast to what? Our what? Confession. Oh my gosh. That one sentence should settle it. Yes, sir. The issue is do we see? Do we see that the high priest has gone through the heavens? And this high priest is who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Haven't seen this. Marie, what should we be doing? Hold fast that confession. Are you sure? Yes. What is my response to seeing him? The problem if you don't see him. That's the problem. We do not see who and what Jesus has done. Because when we see it, we will not be scratching our heads as to what to do. The Bible is very instructive and very straightforward. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. And by the way, as he passed through the heavens, he went through everything you and I are going through now. He just was not catapulted there. He lived here, endured what you and I are enduring, saw what you and I are seeing, tasted what you and I are tasting and at the end of all of it God placed all of our sins on him and because of sin there was a necessity for death sin is what brings death if there was no sin there would be no death the only reason Jesus had to die was because my sins and your sins were laid upon him. And immediately the sins were laid upon him, he was under the penalty of death. Why? 
Because the wages of sin is death. But the good news, the too good to be good news, is that unlike everybody else that had been doomed by sin, who died and were buried and could not overcome sin and death, in this high priest, yes, he was crucified, dead and buried. But on that third day, the earth witnessed something they had never seen. Because on that third day, heaven looked at this grave and said, this man has conquered death and sin and therefore judicially there is no reason, there is no way heaven could keep him dead and therefore the sting of death and grave had to release him, he had to let him go because at the end of the day we found no fault in him, he is absolutely perfect, he is absolutely sinless and therefore he came out of the grave. says sin then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens let us hold fast our confession everything that's coming against you and I you know why they are coming to cause you and I to lose sight of our confession the enemy is trying to do to you and me what he did to Eve has God not said? Change it a little bit. Just change what God said a little bit. Change it. Don't believe what God said. Just change it a little bit. Oh, yes. And once we change it, that's not what God said. Mm. But we are taught to hold fast our confession. Yeah. Let me read on, and then I need to say one or two things, and I'll sit down. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. What is happening to you and me right now that Jesus does not sympathize with? What is it? There is nothing that's happening to us that he cannot sympathize with. Now verse 16. Let us therefore come timidly. Let us therefore sneak in. <laughs> you see, if verse 14 is not clear to you, verse 16 will be shaky. Yes. If you don't see him clearly as the ascended, risen Christ who has finished the work, if you have any doubt at all about that, you cannot come boldly. You cannot hold fast to your confession and therefore you cannot come boldly. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now it's amazing here in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says we find grace. Yes. Dr. Hamby mentioned this a little bit when he was here with us months ago. So one thing we do know, if you and I are to get mercy, there's only one place. It's called the throne. But what's the, what's, what's, what's the particular thing about this throne? The throne of grace. You say, Pastor, this is Resurrection Sunday. Why are you going like this? The reason I'm going like this is because in John 1, 17, the Bible says, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. On this day, over 2,000 years ago, 
if we are to believe what the church historians tell us, that we celebrate the resurrection. Grace, when Jesus came out of that grave, grace became available. Up till that time, as we've been told so eloquently by Dr. Hamby, truth and grace were trying to meet. But the only place they can meet is across from the tomb or across from the grave or the grave had to have taken place. In other words, there must necessity be of a death. Yes. And then the grace that Noah found, the grace that all the Old Testament saints found cannot become available and accessible by us. Let me tell us why this is so important. And I'm going to make my points very quickly. Jesus in his earthly ministry, I can't remember the exact passage now, came and the Bible told us a man came out of the tombs. You remember the story? And Jesus had to cast the demons out of the guy. And the guy was delivered. That word, tomb, the reason this is so critical for you and I, the word tomb in the Greek really means memory vault. Why must Jesus come out of the tomb? Because the tomb represents the memory and it's a vault of all the bad negative things that's happened in your life that's catalogued. It's all catalogued and placed in the library and this library is called the tomb. So if you are to walk in this grace and understand what God is doing, you and I must be delivered. You see, when Jesus rose from the tomb, you and I also rose. Yes. We left behind us right. the vault That's right. and the memories of the things that haunted us, of the things that stopped us, of the things that hindered us, of the things that sold us short. And we walked away from that tomb and said, vault of bad memories, we are walking away from here. Amen. We are taking on a new life. We are putting on a new glory. We are moving on. Because grace is not available. Now, quickly, what happened when Jesus rose from the dead? What happened? What should I, why should we really celebrate today? Ah, I'm glad you asked. Number one, number one, you and I, for the first time, had the opportunity to become sons and daughters of God. Huge. This speaks concerning our inheritance. Everybody, God is the God of all flesh, but everybody is not the son and daughter. He's the God of all, of all flesh. But you and I had the opportunity to buy into sonship. Let me, let me show you why this is so important. You already know John chapter 1. It says, For he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to them that received him, to those ones they gave the power to become the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. That's true. But let me go read a scripture in John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Hallelujah. John 20. Three things you and I should take away from the resurrection. Number one, we are the sons of God. And by that I mean also daughters. Okay? Look at John chapter 20 verse 16. Jesus said to her, Mary! She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. For I have, yet, I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Ah. This is the first time that Jesus will acknowledge 
and call his father our father. I don't think you understand what I just said. Up till this point, my father, my father, my father. But when he rose from the dead, he said to Mary, I will ascend to my father and your father. In other words, now because of my resurrection, there's an inclusive, inclusiveness. It's no longer exclusive to me as a father. Now there's an inclusiveness. It's my father and your father, my God and your God. Ah! You, you still don't understand what that means. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible talks about how whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus is not just God, and he is. He's not just the Son of God, and he is. Behold, Jesus is also your brother. Woo! I'm praying that God will give me voice for what I'm sensing and knowing in my spirit. He is God. He is the son of God. But above all of that, he is your brother. Do you know what it means for Jesus to be your brother? I've got to take a rabbit trail to show that to you. Because I want light to come. I want revelation to come. I want you to see what you're sitting on. In Genesis chapter 43. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Looks like this is the only one I probably will do. Genesis 43. We have the story of Joseph, who in his own right is a type of the Lord Jesus. A figure, a person who back then pointed at who Jesus is today. How do I know that? Number one. His father loved him so much and gave him a coat of many colors. You agree with that? Yes. What did God say about Jesus? Behold, my beloved son, in whom what? And well pleased. So Joseph and Jesus, similar. Secondly, we are told that Joseph's brothers rejected him. Is that not true? And sold him into slavery out of envy. Yes, sir. Concerning Jesus, he came unto his own, and his own received him not, just like Joseph rejected by his own people. You follow me? Yes. Lastly, Joseph found himself in prison, a butler and a baker. Yes. One died, the other was forgiven, pardoned. Jesus found himself on the cross with two thieves. One perished, the other one what? Saved. You see the similarities? Thank you very much. Now, I'm about now to show you your brother. So here, Joseph is being in Egypt, ruling all over Egypt. I don't want to take all the time to tell all of the story leading up to that, but one thing he said for sure to his brothers, Oh, I can't pass this up. Ten brothers came to him in Egypt. Ten. Leah, the mother, or rather one of the wives of Jacob, had ten children by her and her housemaid. So ten came to meet him, to meet him in Egypt. What does ten represent? The Ten Commandments. The law. So law came to Joseph in Egypt. Joseph said, I have all the provision for you, but it will not be by law. Wow. If you're going to appreciate what Jesus just did and rose from the dead, 
you are going to have to go back and bring your youngest brother, Benjamin. Who is Benjamin? Benjamin is the child of grace. When he was born, Rachel was dying, and he and she named him Benoni, which means the son of my sorrows. You and I were children of sorrows until we met him. Oh, wow. We were children of sorrow until we met Jesus. Yeah. But Jacob in that same hour pronounced upon Benjamin, you are not just Benoni, you will be Benjamin, the son of my right hand. My God, Benjamin represents grace. And Joseph was telling those brothers, the law, that when, if you guys are going to get provision, Grace. You've got to bring grace to the table. Yes. When Benjamin showed up, now we're at the passage, Genesis chapter 43, verse 29. Please read this with me. Then he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He had seen it 10 before now. Why is he saying brother Benjamin? Why? Because the next sentence qualifies it. He saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, Please take note, the very first words out of Joseph's mouth to Benjamin is, God be gracious to you, my son, I want to say to you this morning uh, that first words uh, post resurrection uh, of the Lord Jesus concerning you is grace, uh, empowerment, uh, favor, blessings uh, be upon you. Hallelujah. God be gracious to you. And something is about to happen in Egypt that they could never have fathomed or imagined. But before I get there. Can I just show you? Joseph said, this is my mother's son. This is the son through my mother. Do you know this morning that you and I as born again believing Jesus Christians are not just born again? That you and I are being mothered by the same mother of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Oh my God. Amen. When the angel came to Mary, the angel said to her, that holy one that you are conceived of is of the Holy Spirit. So no, 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 no. Mary was not the mother of Jesus. Jesus was a product of the Holy Spirit. Mary was just a vehicle through which he came. And behold, as the Holy Spirit was the mother of Jesus Christ, even so for you and I, the Bible says we have been born of what? The Spirit. Therefore, the mother of Jesus and my mother, they are the same. That's why God can call Jesus my brother. That's why I can stand with confidence and look at my high priest. You are not just Aaron. You are not just Eliza. You are not just a man or a woman. You are my God, the son of God. But above all, you are my brother. And having a brother carries its privileges. Do you believe it's a brother? Yes. No, 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 no. You don't sound like you believe it. Do you believe it, sir? Yes. Is he your brother this morning? Yes. Are you certain he's your brother? Yes. Having Jesus as a brother carries its privileges. Yes. I'm about to show it to you. He's just not my God. He is my God. Absolutely. He's the Son of God. Absolutely. But it's also my brother. Yes. For sure, we can call this Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. Ah. <laughs> it's a real deal here. Yes. Because immediately Joseph zeroed in on Benjamin. The equation changed. I don't have time to go into all of it. Look at <laughs> verse 33. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest 
according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. Why are they astonished? How did this guy know who's, who's the oldest? Because now they sat on the table and he arranged them according to their birthright. Starting from the oldest to the youngest. So they're looking at them and say, ah, who gave him a birth certificate? How does he know who we are? There is nothing that's happened in your life that Jesus does not know. Amen. There is nothing that's taking place in your life that is not acutely aware of. Let's read on. Then he took servants to them from before him, but Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. Are you seeing that having Joseph or Jesus as your brother carries a privilege? Yeah. He's feeding all of his other brothers. And when he got to this youngest one, they gave him five times more portion above everybody else. Privileges. Tell me, is it because this boy was going to be able to eat five portions? No. God was doing exceedingly, yes. abundantly, above that which Benjamin can think or ask. According to whose power? The power of God that's residing. I am telling you this morning, if you don't see the high priest, you are living beneath your privilege. You are living beneath what God already has for you. Benjamin did not ask for it. He did not petition for that. But grace was at work in him. And his brother said, wait a minute, you've given everybody's one portion, but for Benjamin, the son of my right hand, and by the way, you are also the son of his right hand. How do I know that? You are also seated together with him in the heavenly places. My God, you didn't ask for it. It just happened. Yes. And therefore, you should hold fast to your confession. When you are praying, now you know how to pray. You are not begging. You are not tiptoeing. You are not timid. You are not afraid. You are coming to the throne with boldness. Hey. God, and if Benjamin got five portions in Old Testament days, in this new season, at least I ought to get ten. I'm believing for ten portions. Wherever it is that's happening, hallelujah! I'm going to hold on to my confession. The preacher, suppose it does not happen. I ask you, suppose it does happen. Hallelujah! Keep on asking. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking, because in due season, if you do not faint, you will reap in the name of Jesus. This is true story. And I'm going to bring you the testimonies. Stupendous things are happening. I met a guy last Sunday, right in this congregation. And I'm saying this because I know he will not say it. And I will not give his name. He just got offered a job that will start this month. Incredible pay raise from what he was making before. $13,000 more. Now, Pierre is going to testify next week. <laughs> now, this is not Pierre. The one I'm talking about is not Pierre. But, but this is the reason testimonies are good. This is the reason. I know Pierre's testimony. So when this person told me about what happened to them, how they got a $13,000 pay raise to move to another company, I immediately referenced them to Pierre's testimony, which you will hear in full. Okay. And I said to them, don't go yet. Go back to your job and tell them, I have an offer. In two weeks, I'm gone. Ah! They said, no, you will not go. Long story short, they not only made the offer of the new company, they gave him $12,000 more. You are telling more than no. Listen, if it's not happened for you yet, it will. I'm saying to you, if it has not happened, it is coming. Amen. Hold on. Fast. 
to your confession. Don't move from your confession. No matter what is happening, no matter who is letting go, no matter who is losing, no matter who is failing, no matter who is falling, tell them my case is different. Oh yes, 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 my case is different. I don't know who you believe, but I know in whom I have believed. And as far as I know, everything that I commit to his hand, it will never fall to the ground. Just like that. Just like that. Say to your neighbor, say, just like that. Say, just like that. That's the way your miracle is going to be. Amen. You didn't hear me? I said, that's the way your miracle is going to be. Amen. Just like that. Amen. Oh, say one more time. Say, just like that. Say one more time. Just like that. Now make the devil mad. Just like that. Hallelujah. Just like that. I know a person in this congregation. They won't testify, so I'll testify for them. Just like that. Every month, they are driving a brand new car. Just like that. Just like that. Am I talking? Every month. <laughs> Just like that. If somebody just wants to walk to go and buy a brand new car, yes. can anybody afford that naturally? But when grace is working in your favor, <laughs> when God is opening doors that no man can shut, like when He's shutting doors that no man can open, like that. when the Alpha and Omega is on your side, like that. when Jesus is the beginning and the ending, like that. Uh-huh, you're What are you talking about? See him, the high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, having passed to the heavens. Hold fast to your confession. He's done his part. He's in the heavens. What do you think he's doing there? Why did he not rise from the dead and hang in Jerusalem? Why did he go? He went there to secure your inheritance. Not one thing for which he died will be withheld from those Amen. who believe him. Amen. Just like that. I know a person in this congregation. Just like that. It looked like the world was against them. Things totally, completely dark. This person got a good job. Me and some other people. We begged them, take this up. This is true. This is a true story. This was at the advent of grace, when grace was just opening up to us. Yes. Incredible job offer. Relocation package. Full medical. Obscene money of the kind of which I've had at that time not heard. <laughs> I'm going to take it. Ah, they say, Pastor, I'm seeing something else. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you are seeing something else? I hope it's not the devil talking to you. <laughs> Obviously, they were what? Holding fast yes. to their confession. Months later, this person got another offer, no relocation, with 
at least 25,000 more dollars than what I saw before. Say it for me. Just like that. I really wish I had the liberty. I wish these people get the boldness and the courage to step out here and sell themselves. Because I cannot do justice to what I'm saying, because I'm telling you just like that. Is it a man or woman? <laughs> just like that. <laughs> But my joy is that God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for these people, how much more do you think he will not so do it for you? Amen. So the first thing that Jesus did, and that's the only one I'm going to touch today. <laughs> he made us to become the sons of God. Hebrews 4 again. See then our great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. These guys are sleeping on the. Do you guys have grace over there? Yes, so. Hebrews 4 16. Just like that. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 4 14. See them that we have our high priest. Jesus, the Son of God. In order to appreciate what this is saying, you've got to go back to Exodus 28. Don't turn there, I'm going to read it. I'm going to close in a minute. In Exodus 28, where's my Bible? It's got raptured? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Exodus 28, verse 2. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother. For what? And what? Please, 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 read with me, I beg you. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for what? Glory. And Glory. part of the garments included two things. One, and you can read all of it in Exodus 28. I don't want to read the whole passages. The first two things, the first thing is the stones upon the shoulder of Aaron, the high priest. Two stones on his shoulder. On each of the onyx stones were engraved all the names of the sons of Israel according to their birth. Okay. And then the second thing is what's called the breastplate which is what I have on here. And again, on the breastplate, you have 12 stones. And these stones are the, are upon these stones rather, are engraved all the names of the sons of Jacob or the sons of Israel, this time according to their tribe. There's no need for me to go through all of them. I can give you the names, but that's, that's not the point I'm trying to make. What I want you to see, what he was saying is, seen. He wants you to see something, right? Yes. Yes. What does he want you to see? Galatians chapter 6, verse 16 says, you and I are now the Israel of God. Wow. We know that. We know that they are not all of Israel, those of Israel, Romans. So the Israel we are talking about now with regards to Jesus Christ is not the traditional, physical, natural birth. Yes. We are the spiritual Israel of God. Yes. But even with that, Jesus as the great high priest, 
cannot violate the picture of the high priest that God gave in Exodus. Why is this so important? Thank you very much for that. Amen. Why is this critical? He's passed into the heavens. He told Mary in John chapter 20, don't cling to me. Don't hold me. Don't impede my movement. Why? I must ascend to my father and your father. Yes. My God and your God. When I ascend, what am I going to show? First, I'm going to show the wounds on my body. But secondly, and most importantly, I must be dressed in a high spirit robe. And I'm carrying upon my shoulder. Remember his name, Isaiah chapter 6? His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And where was that going? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. I want you to know this afternoon, is governor, the, the government of your life is upon his shoulder. How do I know that? Your names are written upon his shoulder. And as he's ministering before his heavenly father, your names are being beheld. God is saying, it's time for grace to fall on Bank Akimola. It's time for grace to fall on Greg Tata. Just like that. No sweat, no laboring, no sweating, no complaining. Just like that. But no doesn't carry us as the government. He's also carrying us as his breastplate, which means we are the object of his affection. That's why I'm so sure this morning that I have a blessed assurance because Jesus is carrying my name on his breastplate. I'm not going anywhere. Nobody can remove me because Jesus Christ paid the price in full to carry my name on his breast. Hallelujah. Please don't miss how the Bible describes this garment. It's for glory and for beauty. Can you imagine this glorious and beautiful garment? Wow. What will happen if I was to rip a stone out of this? Yeah. If I was to remove one stone, one name, out of this breastplate that was created for glory and for beauty. You see, you don't understand what Jesus did for you. You think it's about you. No, it's about him. You see, your assurance and your security is not just vested because of you. He has a vested interest because if you are removed, it destroys his glory. It must his beauty. Yes. Therefore, because of his glory and because of his beauty, it is up to him. He be said to sanctify them and perfect them who comes to him for salvation. It's not up to you to save yourself. You cannot pray enough to save yourself. You cannot fast enough to save yourself. God let my sins upon him and send him to the cross so that by his cross I find deliverance. His body was broken so mine will not be broken. His blood was shed so I don't have a shed mine. He died so I can live. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to shout. I want to praise. I want to magnify. I want to exalt. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, my brother, my name star. The Lamb of God in Exodus, the holiness of God in Leviticus, the resurrection of God in Numbers, the instruction of God in Deuteronomy. Now, where am I, God? There is no one like God. He is holy, He is great, He is marvelous, He is wonderful, He is counselor, everlasting Father. May God help us to see. To behold him as he is. Yes. 
Just save that for me. Save that for me. I want that. I want that. Just save that for me in a minute. Let me just give you something to, to go home with. Let me just go back to Genesis, Genesis quickly and use that to close. I'm telling you, the more I see him, the more I magnify him. The more I begin to see his wisdom. Yes. His goodness. And his goodness. Thank you very much. Now I know what David was saying. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not depending on me, but on his goodness and his mercy. Now look at what Joseph did. Remember what we said about Joseph, the type of Jesus? And I'm going to use this to prophesy on you now. In Genesis 45. Genesis 45. Ah. Oh, God help us. Where do I start? Genesis 45 verse 16. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house saying, Jesus' brothers have come. So he pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, do this. Load your animals and depart. Go to the land of Canaan. Bring your father and your households and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. And you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, do this. Take carts out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. Bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your goods. For the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. And I prophesy to you today on this Resurrection Sunday that the best of the land of the earth is yours in the name of Jesus. Then the sons of Israel did so. Look at what Joseph provided. And each one of us this afternoon can begin to hold fast to this convention for yourselves. Number one, then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them carts or wagons. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that you will have transportation. In the name of Jesus, if you've been driving a raggedy car up to this moment, this year, before December 30th comes around, God will surprise you just like that. Just like that. You have a car. You have transportation. You have a vehicle. In the name of Jesus. Just like that. Just like that. Number two. According to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them number two, provisions for the journey. Many of you have been traveling without any provisions. When you get to your destination, you barely have enough change to get home. I declare upon you that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the death, that now dwells on you, will make a way and cause provisions to chase you in the name of Jesus. You have provisions. Just like that. Your provisions will show up just like that. Verse 22. He gave for all of them to each man changes of garments. Ah, you will not wear the same garments again. I said, you will not wear the same garments over and over and over. He said, Pastor, why are you going like this? Why is this important? How will the world know that we are steering? How? You're going to show up in a nice transportation. They say, wow, Maserati. Wow. This is the only one in Gwinnett County. Yes. My father is the dealership. Just wear that. And if I want, I'll be in the Rolls Royce tomorrow. How? Just wear Provisions. You are not cutting your hair to find twenty dollars. 
You have to be you are loaded. Just like that. And then garments. You will no longer. And now take this in good spirit, please. What I'm about to say. If you don't want to, you will no longer have to shop at the dollar store. Was made by my, 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 my father. Yes. Six feet of a new. My father created it. Therefore, I will have what change of garments. Whatever my heart desires, I will get it. I won't labor for it. I won't sweat for it. I won't cheat for it. I won't steal for it. But because I'm his brother. <laughs> because I'm his brother. Let's sit down. But, verse 22, to Benjamin, he gave what? 300 pieces of silver. Wow. The rest of the boys don't get that. Do you see the distinction? Yes, sir. He gave them cuts, he gave them garments, but to Benjamin, 300 pieces of silver above the provisions. Five changes of garments. Benjamin, when you come out in the morning, you look different. In the afternoon, you're different. Midday, you're different. Evening, you're different. At night, you're different. Five, number of grace. Number of grace. Benjamin, your case is different. Is there any Benjamin who has this afternoon? Oh my God. Are there any Benjamins here today? Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I wonder what the brothers were saying as he gave him 300 pieces of silver and he didn't get any. As he gave him five chains of garments and he didn't get any. That was an opportunity for Major Benjamin to preach grace. It's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Lord. You, you guys have been coming back and forth to Egypt, laboring. Begging for food. Benjamin came once. Yes. Oh my God. My, God. my sister, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey! You should have one time. Got everything. Because for grace, you don't need a second come out. One time, one time, fix it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, concerning you, I declare your heavens open. In the name of Jesus, I will your To stop. What does it draw in? Jesus gave the parable of the unjust judge. But we did not understand it. Talked about a woman who had been aggrieved and who was pleading with this unjust judge to execute judgment in her favor and she pled and pled and pled and finally we are told that the judge moved and Jesus said will he find faith on the earth because we've been reading the Bible through the lessons of the law we did not understand what he was saying the point he was making was not in the continual beating down of the judge to give judgment in her favor. Wow. The point he was making was the woman stood and the judge, God, who is unlike the human judge, who needed to be battered to respond, he said, Our father is not like that unjust judge. Whoa. That you do not have to beat God down to get you your answer. Whoa. Ah, number one, we are the sons of God. Yes. I won't put this, but I'm going to throw it out there. Number two, huge. You are kings. Yes. 
you are kings. Yes. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. He loved us, washed us, and made us kings and priests. Why is this important? You cannot approach the throne with boldness if you are not a king. Oh. Wow. This is why Jesus is the king of kings. Who are the kings? Me and you. Huge. If you went to England today, you could not go to Buckingham Palace and approach a human queen sitting on the throne. Hear this. When you came before her, if you were allowed, going back out, you could never turn your back on the queen. That's protocol. You have to back out. Because you're a commoner. The queen must never see your backside. Ah, okay. <laughs> see, we see scriptures, we don't know what it means. You remember the case of Esther? Before she could go to the court, she had to be prepared 12 months for one visit. 12 months for one entry. And even at that, must be invited. And at that, a scepter must be offered her. Otherwise, she died. Now, I'm sharing that so you can understand the implication of being kings. As a son, you have inheritance. As a king, authority. And dominion. That's why sickness is among us. That's why poverty is among us. We do not understand as king. You have dominion over those things. And with boldness, you can declare as a king that those things have to go. So I made you a king. So now as king, every king has a million. Yes. There's a sphere of influence yes. and of authority that's available to you as a king. Yes. It's a power. Now, and yes, I'm closing. You're a son, you're a king, and last one, you're a priest. Now, I'm going to pick that up next week when I'm talking to the singles. Please, you don't want to miss it. Yes. You don't want to miss it. As the son of God, there's a manifestation of, of his love in my life. As the king in and under God, there's a manifestation of his authority. But as a priest, I have the manifestation of his estimation. Oh. Wow. Huge. Yeah. Huge. If you read John 20 and you finish reading it, after Jesus told Mary, I go to my father and your father, my God and your God, he now breathed upon those disciples and said to them, Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Wow. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Why? He's commissioning them into their priestly ministries. Estimation. Whatever you estimate. That's with, ah, sha, 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 sha. Yeah. We will pick up from there on Sunday. Because you will clearly see Thank you. what God has said for us. Thank you. If you're here today, and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It will be a travesty for you to shout, rejoice on this glorious day and miss the substance of what God has come to do through his son. Yes. When he sent Jesus to that cross, he nailed along with him all of your sins yes. and released forgiveness. So through the cross of Jesus Christ, forgiveness is available to everyone. But you have to believe it in order to receive it and in order for it to become real in your life. So I'm asking you right now, if you're here, or perhaps you're watching my video or streaming, and say, Pastor, I want to be the son of God. I want to be born again. I want to be saved. All you have to do is believe and repent. Yes. Or repent and believe. 
that what repent there does not mean you stop sinning and then you believe. No. Of course you need to stop sinning. But what I'm saying to you is, we catch the fish first before we clean it. Repent there means change your mind. You can't save yourself. You cannot help yourself. God has done it and change your mind by believing what God says about you. Yes. That you are in need of a savior. That's what the word repent means. No one has the ability to change unless God helps them. Yes. So you have to come to God first and then he begins to clean you up. And the sins and all the acts that you've been doing begins to drop off of you. Folks, when I met my wife and became joined to her, I automatically became disjoint to all other women. Yes. So what I'm saying to you is, once you join yourself to Jesus, all the other things drop yes. off of you. Yes. He takes care of that. Yes. But you have to come first. You have to believe him first. Yes. You have to accept him first. Yes. It's your savior. He wants to deliver you. He wants to rescue you. And so Father God, we thank you right now for every man and woman in a valley of decision, wherever they may be, that the power of the Holy Spirit is released to convince them, to bring them to a place where they can accept and receive the wonderful provision of your salvation. We thank you. We bless you. And Lord God, I pray for all of your sheep, your brothers and sisters here, who are in one valley or the other, who is believing you for one deliverance or the other, who is believing you for one miraculous act or the other. On this great day, manifest your glory. Let your power be seen. Let your blessings be released upon them. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the great jobs. Thank you for the testimonies. We want more. We are holding on to our confession. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, you are a great provider. You will continue to provide. Thank you for your provision. We bless you now. We praise your name forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.